بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جمع مبارك to you all بسم الله الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يعده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم all praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasil li amri wa ahlul uqdata min lisani yafqahu qawli subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta l'alim al-hakim. Pray that may Allah open my chest and make easy for me this task and loosen the knot of my tongue that these words may be understood and we give praise and glory that glory belongs only to Allah. It belongs only to Allah for we have no knowledge except that which uh, Allah has given us. Uh, indeed, Allah is the all-knowing, the all-wise. Yeah. Bismillah and assalamu alaikum to you all uh, and uh, greetings of the blessed Juma to each and every one of you. I pray that uh, each of you and your families and your loved ones are all doing well and healthy uh, on this Juma, inshallah. So as is probably, uh, you know, it goes without saying just with respect to not just the events of the past few months, but particularly uh, in more recent times, it's hard for us to not be able to see what's kind of going on transpiring, whether just down the street from some of us or in our cities or in our neighborhoods, uh, we see uh, quite a bit of uh, anxiety, tension, a lot of discrimination and uh, violence in different ways uh, perpetrated on individuals standing up for justice, on individuals standing up for those who are uh, victims of oppression, victims of genocide, victims of uh, occupation, so on and so forth. And uh, many of us may, taking a look at this, looking at all of this, um, look at uh, the, the 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 movement that is kind of coming and becoming in, in different ways and thinking about how can we kind of get involved. We see a lot of uh, kind of maybe the invocations from our leadership or from other people that say, you need to get involved, you need to step in, uh, you need to stand there for justice, you need to do all of these different things. And uh, for some of us, that might be pretty easy to, to go out and to, to, you know, go stand with the protest, to go uh, and stand shoulder to shoulder, regardless of what might be awaiting or some of the uh, disciplinary actions that might be taken from administrations or even from uh, local law enforcement that, that might cross the line. Um, and there's others that we may feel like, I don't know if I can, I feel comfortable with doing that. I don't know if I fit in with this. And there's an overwhelming sense of maybe guilt or shame that comes around this. And so we think about in moments like this, in times like this, when uh, there seems to be quite clear a line of uh, standing for justice and standing for uh, not standing for justice. It doesn't necessarily need to be monolithic either. Um, when we take a look at what do we mean by prophetic justice, or we talk about the, the chutbah topic here, when we talk about prophetic justice, uh, justice and standing up for justice is not monolithic. It doesn't look the exact same um, in each and every single instance, but also we model off of the prophetic community. We model off of not just the uh, series of prophets and the, the lineage of prophets that uh, we are blessed to have within our Islamic tradition, but the community around those prophets, the responses of those prophets, uh, the response of the people uh, as guided by those prophets in those various situations of injustice. So like I said, it's easy for us to sit back, to look at all that's transpiring um, when you see uh, different protest movements, different encampments, um, you know, being uh, really uh, treated in, in, in such a uh, inhumane way in different in different spaces that that you know is escalating and feeling like either we're involved in one capacity and that's the only way we can get involved, or there's um, you know there's no other solution. So either we're all in or we're not. Uh, and I think that there's a little bit of nuance for us to be able to recognize that 
each of us might have different limitations. Each of us has different things that uh, we might be good at or might have uh, capabilities for. And how can we translate that into these movements for justice? How do we translate that into the spaces where we are called to and need to stand up for justice? But standing up for justice, again, is not uh, a monolith. Standing up for justice can look like many different things. And when we take, for example, with respect to the prophetic community, it wasn't all the exact same people, just like the Prophet Sallallahu They weren't all uh, middle-aged um, you know, Arab men uh, that 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 were just across the board, the exact same lineage, exact same ability or whatnot. In the community of the Prophet um, from start to finish, you had people of different abilities. You had people of different genders. You had people of different socioeconomic status. You had people um, with different predispositions in terms of the different skill set that they brought. They weren't all the exact same. You had people uh, who were wealthy in one aspect and people who uh, had just been freed as slaves on another aspect. So you have a spectrum of folks. And again, like I said, apart from the differences in uh, socioeconomic status or in gender or whatnot, uh, we, there's notable examples within the prophet, prophetic community of individuals with uh, disabilities or with different abilities in a sense. Some people didn't have eyesight. Some people um, had, uh, you know, didn't, didn't have uh, all of their limbs. Some people, you know, and different things like that, but were still incorporated into the community. And not just that, we're still being able to carry out uh, not just the mission of Islam, but when the moment called for them to stand up for justice, uh, to always stand up for justice, but in particular instances, everybody had a role to play. And we think about in this aspect uh, as well, when it, when we look at what might be transpiring um, with respect to uh, what's going on on college campuses and around the country, around the world, and feeling passionate that, you know, we too want to stand up for uh, our brothers and sisters in Gaza or our brothers and sisters uh, across the world or for any other injustice. But uh, what can we do at this particular time? Uh, and feeling limited, like I, I, I'm not somebody that can go and protest or I'm not somebody that can do this or go into this encampment or whatnot. Um, therefore, I don't know if I can help at all. Um, and I think that being able to look at our tradition, being able to see prophetically how does standing up for justice look like? It gives us a little bit more of a cause for uh, for pausing and being able to say, well, actually, we can do so much more than we actually attribute to ourselves. So let's think about with respect to the uh, instances that are at hand here. When we look at just as a case example, uh, the different protests or the solidarity movements or encampments that are happening at universities, uh, we sometimes may think like, oh, just showing up there. Um, and that's the only way that we can help out, um, you know, in terms of supporting the students and being there front and center. I ideally, you know, it, it would be nice to be able to do that and to to uh, strengthen numbers and to be able to show up in that sense. But we recognize that might not be the uh, the the aspect that can be attained for everybody. Um, some people may not be able to help in that different way. And to think about how in this particular moment that we are in, so many different avenues are opening up for us to be able to get involved, uh, even if we feel like we just want to stay in the comfort of our homes and not want to worry about anything else uh, beyond what's in our living room or on their couch. Uh, and, and there's a, uh, there's opportunities for us to get in, involved in so many different ways and so many different uh, outlets that doesn't maybe require us to feel like we need to go on one side or the other. And so thinking about, as, as like I said, scale it back to the prophetic community, scale it back to the prophets themselves. When you take a look at uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him, in his own uh, lifetime, with respect to the different things that required uh, standing up for justice, apart from that just being an ethic in terms of how you live your life, but in different situations, different movements, different uh, instances, whether it required him to stand up uh, with respect to um, you know, fighting for justice, literally in the fighting sense, or whether it required uh, to speak the truth or to do something else, you see in his own example, different ways in which this uh, this standing up for justice manifested. Uh, we see before Islam, uh, in, in famous instances and stories, where uh, the Prophet his, his way of participating in justice movements was him being the broker, the being the peacekeeper, being the peacemaker, in a sense, not the keeper, but the peacemaker between uh, the different tribes. We have the instance of the, the Black Stone and, and kind of helping to negotiate uh, 
tribes and uh, you know brothers and sisters and and you know different lineages that were at each other's throats negotiating a space where uh, this type of conflict would be prevented, providing a space for them in that aspect. We see uh, the Prophet ﷺ participating uh, in the uh, what's called the Hilful Fudul or the Pact of Chivalry, where you know he's he's putting his uh, signature to the to the pen, or he's putting his uh, commitment with respect to upholding um, you know the these uh, the the agree agreements that are made with respect to not harming you know the uh, the people who are coming in uh, outside of Mecca and and having this this pact uh, of being able to enjoin injustice. You know, you see him participating not just in, in the war in a sense, you see him also participating in setting up within his own masjid uh, as they have the uh you know the the for the Allah Sufa, the people uh who are of the uh you know the the, the most marginalized setting literally up like a red, uh, a refugee shelter uh in his mosque. You see different elements that are there, but apart from his own diversity in terms of how he is showing up to the situations depending on how they uh, manifest again within his community. You have not the same exact person duplicated 100 times, 1000 times. You have men, women, children. You have people who are Arab. You have people who are not Arab. Um, you have people of all different abilities still participating, still taking part, still being rewarded for their participation in justice. When you would see the Prophet ﷺ and his companions having to go fight a battle, the Prophet ﷺ would set up uh, somebody to be uh, you know the 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 person in charge, a sense of uh, of the city when when he is leaving, um, and oftentimes in certain instances that person he would put in charge was uh, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktum, who was the blind Sahabi. Uh, when you read uh, Surah Abasa um, and Surah Abasa talking about how uh, there's an instance where uh, the Prophet some frowned when he was talking to someone from the Quraysh and a person had interrupted him who was a blind man. This was that same man, um, and the Prophet Sallallahu elevating this person to the point uh, where they are not not just uh, in a space of leadership, but while the Muslim army, while the Muslims are uh, in conflict in one end, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, a blind man, is is taking care of uh, the other end, is 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 upholding his end of the of the bargain, and in other instances you have uh, different Sahabiyat or different female companions that are also participating in terms of uh, these these literal struggles, whether it is uh, supporting the troops that are there, whether it is uh, serving as medics, whether it is providing so many different instances um, that are going about. Uh, you have uh, a rich description, especially in, uh, in later battles of how within the Prophet's mosque itself, you have uh, these female companions serving as like almost like nurses, as medics, treating people within the mosque um, and helping out in different aspects. But as I mentioned, you know, you have you have this spectrum of involvement, but the most important one of it, uh, I think, comes from this this dua that uh, we see in the Quran that's lifted up that uh, comes in, in the context of, you know, David and Goliath and, 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 and the sphere of where uh, the dua is that Rabbana afrigh alayna sabran wa thabbit akudamana. That our Lord pour upon us patience and plant firmly our feet. One surna ala al komil kafirin and help us give victory to us over those uh, who are antagonizing, those who are disbelieving. But think about the sequence of that with respect to. Uh, you know, don't just help us establish our feet firm. Don't just make us upholders for justice. Don't just give us the equipment needed to be able to fight for justice. Pour upon us patience. Pour upon us that which can help sustain us through this journey, through this fight, through this uh, battle for justice. And and this pouring upon for sabah, pouring upon for patience is something accessible to everybody. I might, you may read this verse and say, plant firmly upon our feet. I might be somebody who's disabled. I might not be able to stand on my feet. How does this uh, relate specifically to me in this sense? Um, but think about how these words are applicable to each and every one of us, just as the injunction of upholding justice, fighting for justice, be witnesses for justice, regardless of who it's against, how that is applicable to each and every one of us. But it, and especially in this particular instance, it asks us to think about in what ways we can continue to get involved because it takes uh, a diversity of different folks. It takes a diversity of different skill sets or whatnot to actually make that movement for justice go forward. And you'd see the prophetic community. He didn't just have the people who were really handy with swords. He didn't just have people who were just really good with their, uh, with, they're really sharp with their tongues or really good with other craftsmanship or whatever it may be. He had an eclectic 
eclectic community, a community where people uh, came together with their different abilities in different ways, and together were able to progress and grow from a movement that was a very persecuted space to something that came to be um, the community uh, of the entire uh, Arab Peninsula and, and later on spread forward. Uh, but in that in that same instance, like I said, you look at the first 10 to 12 years of the Prophet Sallallahu community, you have a perfect example for how different people are getting involved in different ways from different margins. You have someone, again, you have somebody, uh, we can maybe analogize this, that when the Prophet ﷺ is starting to go forth and to go into uh, the Haram, go to where the Kaaba is, to go pray uh, to what you would see as a constitutional right, to just go and pray, a God-given right to just express your freedom of religion uh, and to pray, and to be harassed, to be antagonized, to be um, bullied in different ways. You you have uh, really vivid descriptions of how uh, people in the Quraysh would come and would would spill things on him, whether it's animal entrails or would would like you know start kicking him or would assault him while he's praying. Different things like that, not just to him but to other Muslims as well. So literally think about the imagery that you see on CNN or on the news right now of how people are maybe sitting uh, or protesting and, and uh, you know just peacefully uh, observing uh, their their constitutional right, and somebody comes in you know, uh, with, uh, with, you know, pepper spray or with a riot stick or whatever, in a sense. And you think about in a way that our Prophet Sallallahu is just sitting in the space praying, just trying to do his basic right, uh, and is getting assaulted for this space. Um, now, what what was the response within the community? Some people, like Abu Bakr, uh, a Sadiq, would stand up for the Prophet Sallallahu and say, you know, why are you going to, are you going to kill a man for literally just saying that his God is one, his God is Allah. And him him then getting involved into uh, the, the ruckus when people start to unload on him and beat him up. Um, you have other responses that come about, but you also have uh, people like um, Arkham, who uh, provided and opened his home for the Prophet Sallallahu and the community to come uh, and 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 do their prayers and to do their worship and, and do their, uh, their dawah, to do their uh, education and, and their community building at Darul Arkham, at the home of Arkham. So you have different ways people were getting involved in different settings. You had people uh, that were waiting, and then you have uh, some more of the muscle that came when uh, Omar radiallahu anh, had come about and was like, now we're going to actually you know, do Islam more publicly. We're not going to be afraid. So you have different people with different skill sets that come uh, that allow for the community to continue to grow. But it's important for us to recognize that it's not to be discounted just because we're not able to do one thing doesn't mean we can't do the whole thing at all. Uh, there's different parts for us to be able to play. And when we recognize where we're at right now, um, especially as the community is starting to coalesce and you have different communities, different faith communities, different traditions coming together, people of all different backgrounds, recognizing this is a moment in which they cannot stay silent. Uh, you see a, an abundance of opportunities that in our lifetime has probably not been as accessible to be able to say, oh, I need to send a letter to my congressman. I need to send a letter to this or whatnot. And it can just not be done with the tap of a button on your phone. Um, but thinking about maybe that's something that I might not feel comfortable doing, but it's it's important for us to be able to think about how accessible is this for us now? Um, what role can we play? If it's the littlest thing that we can do, what can we tangibly act on? And what can we do that within our abilities falls within that and, and gradually opening us up to different possibilities? So just think about, uh, as we close here, in a sense, just uh, we take a step back, we see a lot of the vivid imagery that's happening, we see the stories, we see it, maybe we're just a degree separated, maybe we're there, maybe we're, uh, you know, right in the trenches with everything else. Uh, but just think about in the sense that just how we are doing something, it doesn't mean that this is the only way. Uh, it requires concurring, moving different parts and moving different places for us to actually make a tangible difference. Some of us will be able to go to those front lines to be able to stand that guard. Some of us will be able to be arrested uh, and, and, and go to jail and be able to do these different things. Others of us may be the people that need to be standing outside those jails. Other, other of us may be showing up before that protest to give some water. Others of us may be uh, sharing about the messages on our social media. Others of us may be the people that don't know where to kind of fall in all this, but can we, do we drop the weapon of being able to actually pray, to just be able to keep uh, our connection to Allah with all this? Because as we see in this prayer of Rabbana Afrika Layna Sabran wa Thabit that first and foremost, we don't forget that we are walking in this walk, not just for ourselves, not just for a cause or not just for something material, but we are walking in this cause because we are doing so to be connected to Allah. 
So thinking about in what ways are we contributing that even the littlest thing that we do uh, is is a step towards uh, working towards uh, you know not just the end goal of this of this solidarity of this movement, but also in a way doing our part, and that it opens up gradually and gradually. I want to share. There's also a story of uh, a, a uh, poet of the Prophet named Hassan ibn Thabit, uh, who was a man and had uh, in many different instances in the Sirah would be confronted with this issue of having to fight in in a war fight in battle and was someone who said that i, I this that's not my predisposition i i, I you know, i'm not a warrior i'm not that that's not where my skill set is i i I'm, I'm a poet like you know and so th there would be this tension in a space where you have someone who's not living in that aspect of like what you would expect um you know chivalry or masculinity in that aspect of fighting on the front lines but someone who's a very gifted poet someone who's very sharp with their tongue who had a lot of talent in in poetry and for whom the Prophet ﷺ had set up another member, had set up another pulpit in his mosque for this person to be able to give poetry, to share poetry uh, in benefit of the Muslims. So to use his words, to use the thing that he uh, was skillful at in a way to contribute to the cause of Islam. Um, he didn't have to just pick up a sword to go say that now I'm fighting with it. He, he acknowledged that this, I, I can't do that. Like, you know, that's not what my strength is. My strength is in the written. My strength is in the spoken. And so I can I can help in that aspect. And so thinking about how the Prophet ﷺ recognized these things, the people of the Prophet ﷺ also recognize these things. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, it asks us to now be able to also be cognizant of what are our limitations, but what are our abilities and when a movement, when a time for justice, especially such as a time as this comes about, we ask ourselves not only, we don't just look at the glass half full and say, oh, I can only do this, I can only do this, but we ask ourselves with the abilities that we have, what can we do? And we do so with the backdrop of thinking about those who are not able to do so, those who are being prevented for doing so, those who we are fighting for. Um, each of us here maybe has an access to uh, our devices or has access to um, you know, different individuals or different folks or has access to different resources that people who we're fighting for do not. Um, and in what ways are we are we doing that? And again, at the least, are we doing anything within our own personal practice of our prayers, of our connection to our faith to uplift those people who we're fighting for? Or are we kind of stay, keeping that silent as well? And so it, it builds on each other. It has layers to it. But it's one for us to think about as we uh, go forth. Where do we? What? What are? Our, what are our? What is our bandwidth? What are our capacities? What are our skills? What can we do well? What can we feel like that maybe that's not our strength? But not using it as a limitation, like oh, just because I can't uh, go out into that protest, I guess I can't help with anything else. Being able to say, well, you know, I can't go here, but what? What can I do with the things that I do have uh, at my? Uh, disposal uh, and being able to see at a time like this where you have so many things now accessible to us, so many things being pulled forward to us uh, that are at the click of a button or that just require the bare minimum for us in what ways we can access that uh, together. So, you know, as we as we look at ourselves um, in this moment and feel that kind of tension, feel that uh, discontent, maybe feel a little bit of frustration or feel some of that shame. We may feel like I'm a little ashamed about not wanting to be able to, uh, I feel you know, guilty for not being able to do as much as I can because I saw somebody on social media does this or my other friends, all my friends are doing this, that I feel guilty I can't. Um, using it not as a way to distance ourselves, but using it as a way for us to say, well, how can I conceptually think about being able to do my part because in the community of the Prophet Sallallahu imagine the frustration that some of the companions had who might not have had eyesight to be able to go forth into battle or to be able to fight for justice in different ways. Imagine some of the frustration that how the Prophet Sallallahu had children that were maybe like 15 or 14 years old, enthusiastic youth and teenagers that wanted to go fight for justice, fight for uh, the Muslims. And he would say, no, you're too young. Imagine just them feeling like if I was only a little bit older, if I was only a little bit this, um, all of these different things that come about. But think how in different ways each of these individuals were able to help and each of these different folks were able to continue to help, not just in that moment, but in the time to come afterwards and in what ways that we can continue to do so, uh, both in this time, but also in the time going forward. So I encourage you all. As we are watching the news, as we're watching the headlines, at the least we can do, we can all as a baseline, keep 
those who are at the forefront of this movement, who are you know being kind of in the in the line of fire, not just keep them in prayer, but keep the folks who they are fighting for in our continuous prayer. That they don't have to continue to encamp, they don't have to continue to protest. That if those systems of injustice, the people who are oppressed, uh, are liberated, are freed of such injustices, that there not be a reason for these folks having to do what they're having to do. But at least if they're doing that, the least we can do is continue to pray for them. But if not, there's different levels to how we can continue to uh, get ourselves involved. But uh, as Dr. Martin Luther King had once shared that, you know, if you uh, if you can't, you know, uh, run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. Uh, if you can't crawl, then, you know, just do something. But whatever you do, keep moving, keep doing something. Um, and, 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 you know, to not use as an excuse that just because I can't do this, means I can't do all anything else that's there. Because I think you'll find in the context of justice, especially within the Islamic tradition from a faith-based lens, fighting for justice has such a depth and nuance to it that it's about your intention. It's about being able to just to try to do something. It's just about to, even however little it may seem in this world, it has an expansive amount uh, within from, from what Allah sees um, and uh, just keeping that intention pure. So may Allah allow us to be uh, a people that, continue to uphold justice, to fight for justice, to recognize and to know our own abilities, to recognize and to know our own limitations, but to not see those as hindrances for why we cannot stand up for justice or why we cannot do something to help others, but to be able to see that as opportunities and open doors for us to continue to get involved. What might feel like a closed door for us, um, or maybe an open door for somebody else, uh, their closed door might be an open door for us, and we may be able to do something even more than someone else might be able to do in one setting. So may we not lose sight of the fact that this movement for justice requires all of us from all of our different abilities, all of our different backgrounds, all of our different genders, all of our uh, different predispositions and whatnot. Uh, and it's just as valuable as any other aspect. Um, but if we don't treat it like that, if we don't treat uh, being able to just you know, engage with someone in a virtual space or engage with somebody in a space that's not just in the protest, if we ourselves diminish it as something as being just all uh, not as, as, as worthy as this, um, then it'll only be as effective as that. Um, but if we see this on a level playing field, if we see that this is something that's sacred as well, just as showing up in person, just as showing up there uh, on the front lines is sacred, so too is doing that stuff behind the scenes. So too is, uh, you know, just as sacred it is to fight at the battlefield in, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and just as sacred that is, so sacred is it too to provide that water, to take care of the person who's injured, or to watch for the people, take care of the orphans and the needy who are being left alone, to do all of these different things just as sacred in that space. And for us to think about what does that look like for us at this particular time. So may Allah give us that tawfiq, may Allah give us that hikmah, that wisdom, uh, may Allah allow us to uh, continue to find in our own lives, in our own spaces, uh, the ways that we can continue to advance and continue to go forth uh, until, again, the goals that are there are achieved, that not just the folks who are oppressed, the folks who are uh, under this system of injustice are liberated and freed, but until the mercy and justice of Allah uh, reigns upon this earth in every corner of it. And may Allah enable us to be those who are the upholders, enablers, uh, and, uh, and the facilitators of such justice and to be able to fight such injustice within ourselves and the world around us. Just a few announcements here um, for us as well uh, with respect to some things coming up for Muslim space. Uh, just to give a heads up with respect to uh, this Sunday, we have our uh, Quran Halakha that is coming up. Uh, this is going to be on Surah Naba. Uh, this Sunday at 11 a.m. Uh, we'll be going through our monthly halakha uh, and just talking about uh, understanding each chapter that we do within the Quran. And in Surah Naba, uh, we have some resources uh, that are provided. So if you look at our website, uh, muslimspace.org, you'll see a little bit more about this program that's coming up. Uh, we also have our monthly book club that will be at the uh, on Friday the 17th, where we'll kind of meet and discuss about this. But the book that we're going to be talking about uh, and reading this month is called They Called Me a Lioness. Um, and it, uh, this this book is very timely, particularly we were, to where we are uh, at this uh, at this moment in life. Uh, they Called Me a Lioness. It shows us what's at stake in the struggle and offers a fresh vision for resistance with respect to the Palestinian struggle. Um, and with their unflinching and riveting storytelling, uh, these authors 
authors, they shine a light on humanity, not just in occupied Palestine, but also in the unsung lives of people struggling for freedom around the world. Uh, as we've seen in the struggle, as we've seen on the news, uh, this is uh, a struggle that's bringing together people from all different walks and all different uh, uh, strands of life and strands of struggle. Um, so it's a very timely read. So definitely check that out. Uh, and lastly, we have a uh, Quran reflection that will be coming up uh, on Sunday, May 19th. And that will be uh, on, uh, again, we're looking at different controversial subjects from the outside of uh, these these subjects. And one of these is uh, on polygamy. Uh, and so inshallah, uh, definitely tune in for these, but visit muslimspace.org to get uh, the information on all these programs and so much more that's coming up. Again, praying uh, and close here for you all, praying for your loved ones, uh, for folks who you might know that are at the forefront of many of these movements uh, and these encampments and uh, solidarity protests that are happening in and around the country, around the world, uh, praying that Allah keeps them safe, praying that uh, Allah averts uh, any harm coming or being befalling them. But uh, if so, Allah uh, enable uh, each and every one of us to support them as we can, and also to bring those who do wrong to them, uh, bring those who uh, commit injustice to them to justice, uh, because we know uh, with with Allah remains the final uh, justice, and and Allah is accountable accounting for all of these things. Um, so may we be enabled to continue forth in this struggle, but know that. Uh, even as isolating, as lonely as it seems, um, we have so many outlets to be able to get involved. First step is just being able to make the intention to do so. So may Allah bless us in that aspect. And uh, if we can be of any resource, do let us know. But Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.